I see him. Hi, Rod. You've not got a Daniel, that's the thing. We need a little Daniel. Yeah, we all need a Daniel, don't we? In our yeah. lives. We started. We do. I think yeah, we started, yeah. Yeah. Just, just so Should we, we get... keep it, like, this low energy like this the whole time? Just... Look, Hot Rod! There's a hole uh, in the shuttle! And he zooms in. Decepticons! <laughs> and then they come flying out, and then it blows up. And he flies down, and you see the close one thing. Like... And then the tank comes down and says, Come on down, auto brat. And then Cup stops in with the. And, it, and in doing that, it hits the Insecticon. And then they zoom off down to Autobot City. Bang in. Welcome back, kids, to another episode of. Fuck it. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Wait, now you're laughing. Right, three, two, one. All right, welcome everyone back to it. No, no. Oh, this time, okay. Welcome back everyone to another episode of Vice Press Open Channel where we get together to talk about the things we've made, the things we've watched, the things we've done. This week, we've done none of those things. <laughs> so we're just going to have a sneaky little question and answer episode. It's also not our usual recording day. We're bumping it forward, so we have not done we've not watched anything or done anything since we last spoke um but you've been nice enough to send through a whole bunch of questions i think james has a little list there and we're just gonna wheel through them and see what pops out yeah yes yeah, we've got, got oh yeah i forgot to say that's james hello that's matthew ferguson and this is me all right go <laughs> Oh, we're jumping, it's, it's jumping straight into questions. Well, questions. questions. Bang, questions. Bang, go. Bang, bang, question, quick fire. I totally, forgot about this. I totally forgot about this until I pretty much turned the camera on, so I'm not, I'm not overly rehearsed today. Should we tell the kids what we're going to do with regard to these questions? Answer no. them. Yeah, so we're going to give each, each week, we're going to give a little something. Maybe not every week. We'll tell you. Depends. Oh, you're giving something away? See, I didn't say that. Oh, wow. Nobody gets free shit off of me. Yeah, off of me. we're going to give a mystery Ooh. tube this week. We're going to give a mystery tube to the best a question. whole tube? I'm no not way. deciding the best question. We'll collectively decide the best question. Oh, so we've had quite a lot. So thanks everyone for um, for chipping in. So we'll uh, we'll dive straight into them. So if you do want to leave a question for a future episode, you can comment on the uh, on YouTube. That's the best way to do yeah. it. Like and subscribe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, or you can <laughs> send a message, a comment, or whatever. You're right, Flurry. Yeah. It's just having a bit of a meltdown, I think. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just uh, ask a question. Ooh, ask right. a question. So this one's from Luke James. So Hi, comes... Luke. Hello, Luke. So <laughs> thanks for the question. Oh. Have you liked? Ooh. Have you subscribed? Um, considering Toxic Avenger got a recent reboot movie, or has an upcoming recent movie, I guess, um, which seemingly forgotten property do you think deserves a new release, or I guess a a reboot or a remake. Uh, Luke says he'd love to see Thundercats return. Mm, which Star is happening, Wars. right? No, <laughs> <Star Wars. laughs> Reboot that again. Start that again, please. Go back to no, The Last enough, Jedi. Enough that. Legacy sequel to, the, to the, the Last Jedi. That would be where I'd start it. You know, I like The Rise of Skywalker, so no, I'm don't. mad, obviously. I do. I don't it's, like uh, it in terms of the overarching story or anything, but I like the film on its own merits. If it's like, if you think Flash Gordon, this film's weird. What's James well, doing? What's going on? I don't know. Someone's oh, I was there. looking for someone meant uh, sent us a comment on um, on on YouTube that I didn't want to miss, so I was, uh, oh, I was just making sure. I'd go. Wouldn't that be good? We're like the the best way to do it is to comment on YouTube, <laughs> and then we don't read the YouTube. <laughs> but then speaking of that, Flash Gordon, I would I would go for a, a reboot of Flash Gordon. I think. Yeah, I think we've talked about that maybe more than a few times that they someone just needs to get nuts with that with old Flash mm -hmm. Gordon. The only problem is, like, do you keep the tunes or do you get someone else? Do you get Daft Punk back in to do another soundtrack somehow? <laughs> Daft Punk could yeah. be a good, good call, wouldn't it? Just go crazy and get, like, Taylor Swift or something. Who would you, who would you cast as, uh, as Flash? What would your dream casting be for Reacher. Flash Gordon? Oh, uh, no. yeah. It's got to be somebody who can play dumb. Well, have you seen Fast yeah. X? Because... <laughs> <Jesus. Yeah. laughs> 
I wouldn't mind um, the Golden Boy from Guardians. He was basically. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah he's, uh, he's quite yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. not American, though, but I suppose he can just put an American accent on. Yeah. Uh, I think well, everyone thought he Jay- was American for most of his career, so. Jason Momoa is, uh, is uh, Brian Blessed's character. Is it Vol? Yeah, sure. <laughs> no, it's got to be Jack Black, right? Jack Actually, Black. Cool. it's just got to be Brian Blessed again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> is he not dead? Is he's, he's, not dead. he's still he's not sh- dead. He's still shouting. Here. Still shouting <laughs> now. <laughs> he's up on, up on Everest to go in. <laughs> he's still on set. He's just been doing the whole thing his whole life. It's the best. He never stopped. Uh, he's a national treasure in England. We love him. He is. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. goes on like on morning TV here, and they and mm. they don't know why. I don't know why they keep having him on morning TV <laughs> because he just swears. He can't help himself. Perfect. <laughs> Oh, him and Miriam Margulies would make the the ideal you this morning hosts. <laughs> <laughs> he went on with it probably about Brexit or some other political thing, and he was just mouthing off, and it was just so funny. Well, that's, that's what you yeah. want, right? Yeah, isn't breakfast TV over there? It's specifically designed to go off the rails, right? Like that's yeah. the point of it. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It's they it's are... really tempered down. I remember the big breakfast days and stuff. They were. Yeah, but this morning still does weird segments, doesn't it? Like we we don't watch it; we catch it on Gogglebox when they have a weird yeah. segment, and it's so it's just like, what are they thinking? Well, there's that classic one with the with the chef on there, right? And he's talking about creaming himself or whatever, and it, oh, yeah. all, all that sort there's of stuff. one on Gogglebox the other week where they had like a sort of sex toys section, and the, <laughs> this woman <laughs> who tried them all out, and she was like, no, this one. <laughs> Didn't this it, one didn't do the business. And this stuff one. Like that. And he's like, what the? What are you doing? She didn't even touch the sides. It's 10 o'clock in the morning. Oh, what, is, what is going on? Wow. Is that, do they, is that like breakfast radio? Because there's always that weird shit because they run those shows from like six till nine, right? Or even earlier. So you, like that first hour, nobody's, they know nobody's listening to it. So it's yeah, just so like all weird wild shit. Stuff. Yeah. You guys have pretty wild stuff over there, though. Like, I, I watch, um, I mean, I quite like Australian TV, but you have the ra- that Jimmy and Nath on the radio. What are they, are they, are they, are they liked over there? Is it Jimmy I've and Nath? I've never heard Nathan of those something? people before. Uh, they pop up on my Instagram a lot. Um, we watched the Australian repair shop the other day and it was not good. Is it just a bunch of yeah. guys going, nah, mate, it's fat. N- nah, they've got like a pop yeah, guy, nah. but he's not, he's obviously not Steve. And they've got the problem is they're not the it's format, not the people. but it's not right. It's not right. Yeah. They've so not I, got I watched Jay, who's just like, what are you doing? <laughs> You've not got yeah. the main guy. <laughs> You're bruiser. <laughs> You're geezer. <laughs> but it's like, it, it's, you can tell all these people are good at the things, right? But the problem is the repair shop is the repair shop because it's those people saying those things the way they just do it the way they do it right whereas Mm -hmm. they've got this in there like right now replicate the format so they're not acting naturally and kind of being them it's it's a bit odd it's like any it's a bit like grand designs and stuff it's always the original works the best and then they replicate it and it just doesn't quite work yeah that comes back to the question i suppose which we've gone off the rails on Uh, oh yeah didn't even answer that remakes remakes and reboots are good but are they are they ever as good as the original they can be so oh, i think what james, is, yeah. what james is asking here is like um so i guess more he's chosen thundercats which is has never there's never been a thundercats film i guess um thundercats would be one for me i think i'd love to see it. i've always wanted to see a live action they're thundercats doing it. film I, I, know, know. I think it would work better as a cg but go avatar i think they, they're doing that let me look it up because i know the director i just can't remember it because they seem to be doing that with like they've got masters of the universe as well and stuff, aren't, haven't they? But um, yeah, Flash Gordon's a good show. I like those. Those there's not many, but there was a few in the eighties that are fantasy but sci-fi at the same time. So they have swords, mm. and sorcery, but then lasers as well. You know, like mm. crawl and bullshit like that. So they should do more of them because like the Thor Ragnarok was a bit like that. That's sort of like swords and sorcery crossed with sci-fi. That and you know, yeah, that genre. It, it needs to come back. I, I I agree with you. I I think I was talking to Greg Staples about this um not long back. Like um you kind of where you get those kind of weird kind of mashups like lasers with swords is always cool. Um, 
cowboys with swords. Just give swords to anything with swords. It's a bit like what they did with Prey to a certain extent, where they did a sort of uh, Western almost with the Native Americans, but then a predator is running around in it. And I love that sort of crossover. More yeah. Like... I think a lot of those like eighties cartoons did it really well, didn't they? Like you yeah. got that kind of it's um between fantasy and stuff. Um how about you, Flory? Oh he's gone. I wasn't listening to anything you're saying, I'm just reading this article you're about the Thundercats prick. film. <laughs> oh, are they doing, no, are they it's doing Adam something? Wingard who's Adam oh, really? Wingard who's it, yeah, so he was meant to be doing it for ages, and they're sort of saying like the they're doing it. I don't know. Somewhat what did like he the Lion direct? King. I know that name. What did he? He's, direct? he's done those recent Godzilla films, but before that, he did better films, um, which were. Uh, did he do the guest Adam? Yeah, that's really well, good. Guest is a good movie. Yeah, I want to say that might have been the other chap that I was confusing but for those recent. Those your recent, next. The two, he did your next the, and the guest. Yes. The two recent um, Godzilla Kong movies. Mm. What's What's important is they get that they that it's crap. Mm. It's like yeah. presented in a way. Yeah, this is stupid. Uh, let's just have a laugh for t- for two hours. You know. So that's kind of like an important line to draw, and that's why him doing something like Thundercats or Flash Gordon or whatever would be good because he obviously understands that fine line between this is cheesy crap but also still mm. well, well done and sort and of and as a as a motion captured cgi thing that you could see him being able to do that now having basically yeah. just done that with this most recent one where there's like no body in it <laughs> it's no, just, it's just yeah. loads of kongs and stuff loads of it? kongs kong fest <laughs> he's um dan stevens is in that most recent kong film isn't he mm-hmm. because Which he's a, because when... he's his old mate yeah, Dan which is good. Whenever he's Dan Stevens is in the film, it elevates my interest. And he doesn't seem to again, we were talking about this with um with Golden Boy last week. But um he doesn't he seems to pop up sporadically. He he's somebody that I think should maybe have a bigger career than they maybe have. He but then is that unfair? To, though, yeah. Maybe he doesn't care to. I think he's just oh, one yeah, of those yeah. he's just gonna be one of those guys that'll be around for hopefully it looks like forever because he keeps he keeps popping up and he keeps being good. Um, yeah. He's in something Dan else. Dan Stevens. It's... Dan Stevens. Ten stars. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent stars. We're talking about breakfast TV, he had one of those kind of viral things on English breakfast TV, didn't he? Did he? That's what. Yeah, yeah. He popped oh, up on a BBC the beating off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> beating beating off the, best off. Ever, the best ever <laughs> one was the Blade Runner interview with Alison. Oh, oh where, Alison. Yeah. Where she's just like, I haven't seen the film and stuff, <laughs> 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 and cracking out the booze and stuff. <laughs> Let's have another get... question. Oh, yeah, go on. Yeah, okay. We've, we've gone off all the rails a bit. We? <laughs> Next question. This is from Oliver Rankin. Uh, that was a good question, Luke. Thanks very much. It remains to be seen whether it will win anything. Stick around. Ooh. You'll find out. Um, this one's from Oliver Rankin. So Matt pointed this one out, and I noticed it as well. But what unconventional sources outside of film inspire your post- poster? Jeez. Asta. Mm. <laughs> Oliver time. Rankin says, <laughs> "What unconventional sources outside of film inspire your poster designs?" Hi, like Carbonara. That's for you too. Unconventional oh. sources. Carbonara is my favourite. Uh, Oliver is a really good artist as well. He's done um, bits and bobs for us. We'd like to work with Oliver. I think, doesn't he? Yeah, I'd like to work with Oliver. Like creative director. Uh, Excellent. Artists would be. I'd, I'd said this on Twitter earlier on, actually. So David Hockney, I always liked. Yes. Um, and there's a there's a photographer called Amsel Adams who did black and white mm. photography, and I've always liked his compositional style. And then compositional wise, John Carpenter is the best at doing okay. any kind of composition ever. So you just look at his the way he composes shots, and you can think, how can I put that into a poster? There you go. That's my answer. Mm. I pretty much just copy whatever Matt does. <laughs> um, no, I just can't really think of it. I mean, what's what's unconventional? I mean, well, I think for it me, means not not other poster artists. So yeah, that's right. Why I said mm. those so things. probably um, a lot of old comics, really, because I just yeah, Todd McFarlane. Tend... That's the other one, old Toddy boy. Yeah, like even in front of me now, I'm like looking at my old like bits and prints of um. X-Men and, and Amazing Fantasy and all that sort of stuff up on my wall. I just, there's something about 
that stuff when they didn't let it get in its own way. Like a lot of comic covers and stuff now is um, there's just a lot. There's just a lot going on, and there's a lot of coloring and there's mm. a lot of stuff. I just I think there's something to be said for like right. You got to show these five peanuts using their powers against this man that nobody knows, and to do it in. One. And the plane of action is quite simple too. There's like not that much depth usually to them and stuff like that. I've, well, it's like the famous that. one, isn't it? Like the Frank Miller cover for Batman. You know, Batman simple. or Man, yeah, Bat, Batman, Frontman, Batman, yeah. Batman, Batman for Batman. You can go back and watch that episode if you want. It's got a, a name that we thought was genius at the time, and then nobody understood what we were talking about. Um, to me. So there's artists that I'm a fan of. Like I really like Ralph Steadman's art. Ralph Steadman's art's incredible. Um, I've got a framed art print in my guitar room. Um, the the other thing for me is um, I'd say like late '80s, early '90s toy packaging. Ooh, um, yeah. good, you know those those were always really cool. Like you know the GI Joe stuff, the um, the He Man stuff, Ghostbusters. Uh, and outside of that. Formies. The Transformers. <laughs> that, those, t- in my mind, some of my favorite things, my favorite things with old toys. I've got one here, actually. I've got a. I like Peter Coast, just as one of them. seen that. But shit like this, like this is the original oh, toy. Yeah. This, oh, right, right, yeah. Batman box. That's hot. Just that kind of package. I'm, I'm, I'm almost more, more of a of fan. A fan of the packaging than i am the actual thing i love to get to do packaging it's like when so when we do the steel books or like that um soundtrack for transformers that i recently did the art bit is fine but actually putting it together into a package and doing like the track mm. listing and then the little j card thing is way more exciting to do i love doing all that sort of shit yeah i agree yeah and so it was I always my favorite that... thing to do as a as a graphic designer, when, which I was before I started drawing my own pictures. Um, packaging anything with more form than just the flat plane of the poster, it, yeah. it makes it more exciting. I think. And I think the the modern day kind of masters of that are are definitely like Phantom City Creative. They're really good at doing that. Yeah. Although, I mean, we we can't talk about it at all yet because it's something you're working on. But there's some like Flurry, you're incredibly good at that kind of thing as well. I think. Personally, is he what making some kind of toy? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Well, so, trying to, you know, if we can. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, we get Burns. to the end of it. Tim Burns. I've always liked Tim Burns' art. His little sketchy sketches. Good question, have, hey, I, Oliver. That yeah, was that a good was question. Good. Yeah. We didn't go off the rails on that one, so that was definitely better than the last question. Although the last question <laughs> led to an interesting talk. Well, that's the thing. We ended it? up just talking shit. So what, what which was makes better? it? What makes it a better question? I don't know. Mm. Is it a question? Well, at, the end, at the end, we'll decide for sure. Next question! Next question! Um, I like this question as a lot, which doesn't necessarily mean it'll win. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I'm going to add my own spin to this question as well. Oh, no. <clears throat> so Do, this you is win, from Adam... Do you win the mystery I tube win. if this is the best yeah. one? <laughs> <laughs> um, this is from Adam Shepard. Um, again, more more for you two, but I'm going to okay. answer with something um, in a bit as well. So what album cover do you wish you designed or could redesign? So I'll let you two think about that for a minute because I've had a bit more chance. But one of my favourite album covers of all time is the Green Day Dookie album cover. I love that. It just works in so many different ways. I had a poster. Of, like you've got Everyone the square. had that poster, yeah. It's great. You had the square cover, but then they did the extended bit. I've got a guitar pedal where it's on, on printed on the guitar pedal as well. I might pop it up. Bosh. How um, would you redesign it, James? Well, I wouldn't redesign it because I can't design shit. But... Um, <laughs> It's it, the question was what album cover do you wish you designed? I, I wish I designed that. Yeah. Or or what cover could you redesign? Yeah, yeah. Um, James Basima, who we work with a lot, he does a hell of a lot of um, metal album covers. He did that really cool one with like that exploding <laughs> yeah, head. Yeah. With, like the guitar coming in. Just the really best cool. shit ever. Yeah. <laughs> I lo- I I've got an answer. I love his artwork. Go. Uh, one of my favorite albums of all time. It's a perfect album. Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars by David Bowie. I didn't know that was one of your favourite albums. I love that album. Yeah, I love every track Who on doesn't? it. It's ab- absolutely killer. Every single one. It's a very good album. But now it's interesting because that cover is perfect because it is the cover, right? We know it. We've seen it. 
everyone thinks it's, I don't know if you can see it on my camera from here, but I've got the Aladdin Sane in one over there that was my dad's copy of the album. Everyone thinks that's the cover for it if they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. But I don't necessarily think that cover fits the theme of the album, being a concept album and then the story to it. I would redesign that. And I actually have done it before. It's bad, but there was a show. I forget what it was called and where it even was, but it was called like 12 by 12 or something. And it was the theme of the show was 12 inch prints that were redesigned album covers. And I did it like all gold with like a, I don't know, I guess you'd call it like a version of the, what's the Da Vinci like, you know, the, the man. Old mate with his legs and arms. Oh spread. yeah, yeah, the, 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 the true one. Man. That's it. Yeah, that's the one. So I'd sort of like that, but I wouldn't do that. I just would do something now that I can actually fucking draw, <laughs> and I couldn't five years ago when I did that. I would love to do something with that that more invokes the the yeah, overall um, story of the thing. Mm. 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 I like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's good. About you, Matty. So, I always like Iron Maiden album covers because they're just cool with Eddie on and stuff. So they're, they're, cool, yeah. They would be the most fun to do. So, not necessarily redesign one of them, but just do an Iron Maiden the album new cover. One. Yeah, because they're just, I just, I, you know, you're doing, I don't know, coming out of a submarine or something and it exploding. Be fun. Uh, but do you the, think what I would have loved yeah. to have designed was ACDC Back in Black because A, it's literally five minutes work and B to be able to say, I did that. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> and everyone was like, all black. Like the fucking best album ever. I oh, like that. Mm. Everyone bought that. Yeah. I designed it. Yeah. That one back in black with the, with the Iron Maiden covers, because they always have a theme, right? So they're like, all right, it's Eddie, but it's in Egypt or it's yeah. the war or something. Do you think Iron Maiden has any input on that? Or do you think that's just like, the guy, the guys, or whatever, are just like. I think right. they do. I think Bruce Dickinson loves all that sort of stuff because obviously he's a massive nerd. He loves yeah, right. the Prisoner. He loves 2000 AD. He loves Dune. He loves all that sort of stuff, which is why half of their songs are about those things, you know. So, okay. yeah, I don't yeah. really, I don't really I think, know. I think, I think. Oh, there's there's a whole song about the Prisoner, which is great. Uh, back in the village, and then there's. There's one about Dune, and it just goes on about, like, the sandworms and stuff. <laughs> Am I going to have to start listening to fucking Iron yeah. Maiden's back catalogue now? God My favourite song like that ever isn't by them, though. It's the Just Dread one by Anth Anthrax. That oh, is the yeah. coolest metal song ever. Yeah. Just Dread and Mega City. <laughs> I don't know about Cross Anthrax, either. You should listen what to... Whatever I've been listening to. You should listen to the Just Dread Anthrax song, because it is just so good. It's, James put it yeah. up now in its entirety. Go. <laughs> yeah, I remember uh, having quite a cool cover. Like um, Ian, uh, what was his name? Uh, Ian Scott. Ian, it might just be Ian Scott. He was a long Scott's brother. Big, big old, big old fan. Um, the other album cover that I really like, just as a as a, as a separate thing, is um, Megadeth, Rust in Peace. I, I don't know. I always really liked that cover. That was cool. Megadeth had good albums, a bit like Iron Maiden ones, didn't they? Like, just ridiculous. Yeah. What a great yeah. name for a band, though, too, eh? Yeah. Megadeth. Awesome band. Like, you know what you the get. One, the one, going back yeah, to what you Man was... Man War, that's yeah. a good one. Man of War. <laughs> <laughs> going back to what you were saying, though, Flurry, about albums that maybe the covers aren't really about... You've got Faith No More, Angel Dust. Like, that's one of my favourite albums of all time. But that cover with the swan, I guess, yeah, yeah, it never yeah. made any sense to me, especially when you look at things like the real thing and all of that lot. It just Which becomes has... the album cover, though, doesn't it? And then it's yeah. like, oh, cool, that's the album cover. Yeah, good question. It's like like Pinkerton's, Pinkerton's got a really good cover. Yeah. And I just Isn't like it because the album's amazing. See, I reckon that Faith No More Hello, cover Siri. Is... Oh. <laughs> I'm not right. plug Siri. Yeah, good. That Faith No More cover, though, is the best album cover they have got though that's the thing the rest of them i hate them because they got this weird border thing on them and all mm. this like types of shit but that like, that one's decent but yeah i i don't really know the album but it doesn't it makes me think of an enya sort of situation <laughs> yeah good cue i liked that one mm. i've been I like listening to enya a little bit <laughs> oh have you <laughs> yeah 
I remember once I find we put... Enya, Enya calms me down. <laughs> once we turned this on and you hadn't turned your music off yet because you weren't expecting anyone to come on, and he's just sitting there... And he's just like, oh, yeah, I'll take my little drawing glove off. I'm like, what were you doing? He's like, oh, it's working. <laughs> I, I, What's wrong with this kid? <laughs> if I'm intensely with work, then it has to be thrash metal, yeah. That gets me really, yeah. you know, especially if I'm under the gun on something. Extremely loud death metal comes on. But, you know, I don't, I don't force that on other people, you know. I don't make it my whole personality <laughs> it's just not your vibe though that's it i just well, I love it, it though angry yeah. music's the best mm -hmm. this question is from todorov todd derov todd d rov <laughs> all right todd <laughs> how's yeah. it hanging todd we're doing it like it's live it? uh thanks for the question todd which your foster birds are dead um, which <laughs> legacy? <laughs> James is broken. He's having a fit. <laughs> is Wolfie there? <laughs> which? <laughs> oh Jesus! <laughs> which legacy sequels? Being with oh, oh, oh legacy sequels. With legacy sequels being the big thing. Which franchise would you make a sequel to? Choose a director and two leads. Didn't we already do this one? Oh no, we, we were doing no, remakes, weren't we? We were yeah. doing remakes. This, I liked this. That's question. what a legacy sequel is, though. It is a remake, really. No, isn't it? it isn't. No, no it's essentially, not. it's a way to in, like Force nope. Awakens is like a remake of Star nope. Wars. Ghostbusters Afterlife is sort of like a. It's a way to introduce a new uh, audience to an old thing. That's what mm. a legacy sequel is. Even though it's new, it's still kind yeah, of... But... It's like an in-between. It's like it's not just a sequel. We're using... This is something that annoys me, and it's always annoyed me that people... Not me. You've maybe just misspoken. I'll let you. I'll let you pass on this one. But everyone uses remake and reboot interchangeably, and it drives me fucking nuts. No, a reboot is when they, it's like <laughs> a new, it's the same universe, the same thing, whereas uh, a reboot. What, what was I say? A reboot, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See? Point proven. Remake, a reboot. A remake is where it's completely new. Like, the new Crow is a remake. Yeah. yeah. New people. If they, if they rebooted the Crow, it would have to be linked to the original one somehow and be in the same universe. Yeah. So, like, no, that'd be a, legacy a remake sequel. of Roadhouse. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's, yeah. What, that's why I'm saying a legacy sequel is a way... To no, keep, right. a, keep a franchise alive because, like, it dies out eventually, right? <laughs> anyway, it's like ET, nobody cares about it because they didn't do a legacy sequel. A legacy sequel so, uh, specifically has to have cast and locations from the same, the original, yeah, because and, it's and callbacks. Keep, Whereas a reboot, usually, yeah, is complete. We're, we're rebooting, we don't have to call back, we can call back, but we don't need to. That's a remake, a remake no, a remake is when you take the a film that's already made and you just take its bare bones essential parts yeah. and you can redo it in any fashion. Yeah, that's right. So those are three different things, but they are yeah, close they are, to yeah. each other. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. yeah. And now Legacy I don't know sequels. what I just said either. So <laughs> <laughs> Legacy sequels are designed to keep a franchise alive, aren't they? Yeah. So like anyway. in 10 years, they'll do a legacy sequel to Transformers probably. Yeah. What we're going to do is we're going to answer it based on what we think our own personal opinion of a legacy sequel is. So I'm going to go. There's no opinion. With... Go. I know which I'm going to choose already, but go so on. So I'm going to go Batman. Like That's what eight... I was going to say. Ah! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Batman 89, Batman Returns, Dark Knight Returns, yeah. Michael Keaton, come back. Um, now, you could do it two ways. There's two ways. I will allow two ways that they could do this. They could either do Dark Knight Returns or they could do Batman Beyond. I think they do both and they make two movies. That's what I've said for years. Okay. Start so... with the Dark Knight Returns. Then he realizes he's too old to do it. Yeah. Then Batman Beyond, he gets a, a kid to take over. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, in terms of cast, um, so I'm going to ignore The Flash. The Flash doesn't count. The Flash no. is, one, it's god-awful, and two, it kind of had... Um, 
Let's it just doesn't not talk sense. about it. Anyway, um, yeah, so obviously you've got old mate um, Keaton's going to be back. Um, you know, Michelle Pfeiffer, bring back her. Michelle Pfeiffer would be cool um, to bring back as, as Catwoman and things along those lines. Um, in terms of new cast, um, who be Robin. would... Would they bring? Would you get the the one from the Val Kilmer one? It was Robin, but or would you go for someone? You see, or would you I go don't... for a young because yeah. it's a it's a thingy and it's a new Robin, isn't it? In the Dark Knight Returns, in the comic, yeah. I think yeah. you could. I, they get to I do would... the cool like glasses and shit. Then, don't you? See, I wouldn't mind either way whether whether you kind of had forever and or whatever is continuity. I I don't think you need to. I think it kind of gives you more more breathing space i'm just trying to think of like of of, of actor actors and stuff who they could bring in um i think i like just michael keaton would be enough wouldn't it really yeah no i mean in terms of the new the new characters like the robin i can't remember the robin character's name in in dark knight returns cassie is it cassie um, yes i've not read it for Paulson. a while i can't remember the i can't remember the girl's name that was in game of thrones that <gasps> played what Dave Batista as the mutant leader. Yes. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then Michael Keaton's gonna like show him what's what and like break all of his arms and legs. Yeah. So that'd be uh, that'd be my and bring why not bring Tim Burton back to do it? Why not bring Tim? Burton I would back? say maybe not. Let's see you if Beetlejuice you know is any good, eh? Yeah, yeah. But then going back to Adam Wingard, I think Adam Wingard has a good sense of those kind of things. He's a he's quite he's quite fun. With that kind of sentiment, I guess. Yeah. And Dan Stevens would be good, you know, like the the, the Joker kind of character esque that they had in um in Batman yeah. Beyond. He'd make a good villain, I think. Um I'm just struggling who's to who they can um get to play Batman Beyond. And I think what's you two? What about you two? Well what he's gonna be what's Timothy be Timothy Shamalay can be Batman. Oh, oh yeah. it could be Terry. It is Terry, isn't it? Yeah, Terry, it's Terry yeah. Yeah, put him in a tight black suit again. Perfect. Yep, everyone would yep. go wild. He's already yeah. got one at home, but by then he'd be what thirty eight <laughs> by the time yeah. we actually get to. There'll be someone new, but there'll be someone. Yeah, by yeah. Then. And whatever. And my opinion is, Florence Pugh can be in it, but she can be in anything. Yes, please Just and anything. thank you. Yes, everything. She's, um... She does a lot with a little. For example, in in the D- D- Dune, she's in it for what five minutes, and she's yeah. fucking awesome. She's just she's just got something. She's like got that it's similar to Emma Stone. Um, her and Emma, like I, I'm a big fan of Emma Stone's. I watched La La Land again the other day. That's oh uh, no. Oh, I really like it. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, Do you not, not like it? No, that's not a good musical. It's, oh, I love it. Singing in the Rain is a good musical. Yeah, of course it is. It's just what? well, it's just like so <laughs> flaccid. Ugh, no, it wasn't for me. No, oh, I liked it. <clears throat> anyway, what's your two choice? What we're uh, talking about? <laughs> legacy legacy sequels. sequels. Oh yeah, I said um, Batman already. I agreed with you. Oh okay. Mm. Um. I don't know because, what, like, what are they not doing? That's it. That has any Batman. point being done? That no, yeah, well, that. But what Goonies? Were they ever going to do that? They're all too old. No, don't like, do that. You can't do that. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Nothing. <laughs> Just leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> leave them alone. No. It's when there's a reason. I think there's a good reason for Batman because the Dark Knight yeah. Returns is such a good story. They've got it there. Oh, yeah. Just on the side, waiting to be made. Well, it's like what started all started all this was Tron, right? It's literally why mm. one of the reasons it's called a legacy sequel because Tron kind of made the format with Tron Legacy, and it's like, yeah, yeah that was, was. Was there any before that? I don't. I like in my in my mind, canon. It. I'm in my mind. No, there was cool the much. the Cool Hand Loop sequel, Cool Room Money. That's sure, the earliest but, one I can think of. But no yeah. one. But no one really remembers that that is. A sequel, True. right? Mm. That was the Indiana Jones, but oh. that was that was separate because Indiana Jones is just a, an adventure. It's not like, and it just took a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wall so Street. That... There was that one, yeah. wasn't there? Yeah, that might I have guess. been after though. That might have been after Tron. Maybe. So. Either way, they were both bad. Tron Legacy is not. No, bad. not Tron Legacy. I'm on about Wall Wall oh, Street yeah, and yeah, then yeah. the sequel. It's of its time, isn't it? Mm. Aren't they making mm. a new American Psycho? I heard that they might be making the new American Psycho. That seems like a thing you don't need to do. Yeah, that's... yeah, that's a bit strange. The thing so... is, is, like I say, they've got they 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 feel like they've got to keep stuff alive. It's why they remake like 
um, Disney cartoons as live action because they want to keep it alive. And that's mm-hmm. when you think of ones that they haven't, they've got maybe a 30 year shelf life. So, so like ET, 2000. ET seems to be. <laughs> Nobody's, nobody cares about ET, do they? Well, there was Brothers 2000. You're right. Yeah. That was a good 20 years go. after, wasn't it? Yeah, they just hadn't coined the term. No, this no. is the problem. I think that's why, and that's why what I was going to say was after Tron Legacy, I was like, oh, I'll do this for everything. Then they did it for everything, and they were <laughs> mostly not good. So, <laughs> I mean, there's some good ones. Ghostbusters. Afterlife is the best. Afterlife is one of the Star best. Star Wars ones. Force Awakens is really good. Yeah. I'm still a big fan. I'm, I, I support things like, you know, Edgar Wright redoing. Uh, running man and stuff like that yeah i think there's a lot of so that's a remake Ooh, oh, robocop robocop they still yeah. need to do a good robocop. robocop returns they need to do that with peter weller and they find him in the basement because all of the new robots are on some sort of weird ai wig uh, <laughs> internet thing right and going crazy and then we need one that's analog and they get him out of the basement yeah. and he's like Robo <laughs> needs Oreos. <laughs> yeah. and he just <laughs> shoots all of the AI and all of the internet <laughs> <laughs> puts his big spike yeah. in the internet yeah and then saves saves humanity that's yeah. what we need right now in real life yeah, yeah. No, you're not wrong would the internet look like the box that they tricked the woman in or the IT crowd <laughs> carrying around with a red he just stabs that and he just <laughs> <laughs> Smash it on the floor and then stamp on it with his foot. I'd, I'd green like that. Yeah. Yep. Good question. Mm. That's the winner so far, probably. Yeah. Oh. Stop spoiling mm. the conjecture that care. we're going to have at the end. Oh, I, I won't be able to remember. I won't be able to remember well, what well, I said. I well, now you've said that, Adam Oliver and Luke have all turned off and gone, well, I don't fucking need to listen to the rest of this then. Good riddance. <laughs> so, Lauren Galloway. Um, I'm enjoying this. Lauren Galloway asked three questions. Um, oh, but I think we've answered a couple of them before. I mean, we'll just go over one of them very, very quickly because I think we can all just go bash, bash, bash on this one. What is the first bosh, movie bosh. poster you ever fell in love with? Transformers the movie, and it was more because it was on the video box, but also it, it's the poster, and I and I just I loved it. I wanted yeah. it. Transformers the movie it was the first for me, definitely. Yeah, the Ghostbusters mm. one for me. Jurassic yeah, Park. Yeah, that was my. That was a second. big deal. But Transformers Bosh. was before that by about four or five years for me. Yeah, I remember the Spider Man two being uh, Spider Man, the first Spider Man one being really cool as well. Anyway, um, dream franchise to work with in the future. This is from Lauren as well. Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. Let's go Ghostbusters. Who know? Mm. Just because it'd be really cool to do a proper full blown movie poster for that. I think with Ghostbusters as well, the thing that kind of I think folks are getting, and uh, one of those things I'd really, really, really like us to do is to do shit for the real Ghostbusters as well. Like, So I think Lauren's question is pertinent here because it's fran- what franchise? Yeah. So it, it's across the whole thing with Ghostbusters. Um, like there's films that we're missing that like, you know, we've not done Army of Darkness yet. We really want to do Robocop. Um, do some more stuff with Terminator. That's me winking. Um, but then, we're making but posters like... for those things at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, but franchise, yeah, Ghostbusters. Yeah. I mean, what would you want to do? I'd love to do. Don't you want to do a Trek, Mario? But... I'd love to do. You want to do Trek a Mario? Next generation. <laughs> you know that's not happening. You always say you want to do a Mario. Yeah, too. I would. I would do. I would do if if Nintendo is a franchise. I would do that, but it's yeah. not. Um, and and on, on that'll I'll never ever get to because that's just well, how Nintendo Mario is a franchise, isn't it? Mario is a franchise. So. Mm, Zelda, this it Zelda is. movie. I reckon I might have a have a go, have an have an in with that. That might be a thing because that's going to be live action, which is more interesting than doing animated. Movie posters, I think. Who's directed it? It's someone that I wish wasn't. Did I we think. talk about this already? <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty. I'm pretty like right, about the whole thing. Mind. Well, yeah. Now I'm just going to Google again for a while. So, Van. Right, while you while you're looking at that, as a side question, MC Geek asked, "What are the movies you would most like to create art for that you haven't?" So, not necessarily um, like franchises. <laughs> 
Mm, where's Ball? Now I've talked oh, shit about well, him. Maze Runner guy is doing The Legend of Zelda. Yeah, but he's mm. done the new Apes, and if the new Apes is good, then okay. maybe he's coming up. Because I've, I've just done a post of that and written his name on it, so... And mm. to be honest, I think what the problem is with me too, it's not necessary because the the Maze Runner films. Maze Runner is for kids, isn't it? Well, it's, like it's young more adult stuff. It's more that you could say almost anyone except for um, Miyazaki, and I'd be like, nah, fuck it, shit. <laughs> it, I, I love that franchise so much. I want it to be perfect that there's only very few people I think can actually do it. So, uh, good luck to him. Anything can be good. I Give hope him a that chance. he does well. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. The Apes looks really good. I'm I'm hoping okay. it's good. Mm. Yeah. So, what was the question? So, yeah, Sorry. What films? What films would you most like to do posters for that you haven't? Oh man, I've done nearly all of it. Yeah, you've done every film in existence. Yeah, so, I think while you two are thinking, um, Army of Darkness is definitely something I'd like to do something for. Predator, Alien, Aliens, well, um, Vice Press, yeah, 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 Clerks. I want um, to do. I want to do the key art poster, as in the one that's on the buses, the one that's on all the billboards for Alien Romulus. I want to do that. Mm. I am genuinely really excited for that film. I don't think I'm going to get it because they'll go obviously, probably uh, with like a big agency, and like I don't know if I'd be able to compete because when you do a key art poster nowadays, it's not just the art; it's got to go. This size, that size, this way, that way, internet, da, 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 a million different languages. But you've gotten close to it before with these re releases. I've, I've got a taste of it with the Phantom Menace because that's a, lots of different sizes on that and lots of different languages and stuff. So I think I could do it. But I would yeah. love to do it for like a big new movie. And I think Alien Romulus this year would be. I'm not going to. I just. Well, I just would like to. The reason I find this question and similar questions, like <clears throat> even the last one, tricky to answer is because i find that i get most excited about things that just sort of pop up that i don't really think about mm. so even films that i'm like oh, i haven't i haven't even seen it i have nothing about that but then you kind of start mm, you kind of start rolling on it and tinkering and then it becomes exciting to make you know so i don't know i don't know mm. i like lots of th i like too many things to sort of choose and i also am happy to work on stuff that is maybe not immediately that exciting, if that makes any sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I'll tell you what, tell you what I actually want to do all the time now. All I want to do is make VHSs. That's all, that's all I want to do. Yeah. So it is anything fun, you want to stick on a VHS. It is, it is really fun. I'm looking forward right. to Oppenheimer on VHS. It's going to be, be a good one. Your favourite film? Film of the year? <laughs> totally. Open House, so this is from Stephen Football Monkey. Hello, Football Monkey. Um, open House is coming up. Don't we know it? Coming up rapidly. Don't we know it? Um, <laughs> who, is, who is the one guest you'd like to have there? Um, basically, you can have dinner with anyone. It's basically you can, you can have a dinner with anyone ever question. Are we talking alive? Are we talking dead? Are we talking... Is there an artist there that we'd really like to get there that we... I guess, for the most part, it's geographically restricted. William Shatner. He's <laughs> right behind you now. What do you mean? Yeah, no, lives exactly. In, lives Come in your on, Bill. The well-known poster artist, William Shatner. <laughs> I bet he could do it. I bet he could do it if he wanted. You know, I idolise that man. I'm sure he could do a poster if he really wanted to. He's just not put his mind to it. No. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Does he need the hair piece for that? You, you, laugh, you, la you laugh, you laugh, you laugh, you laugh, but you know it's true. <laughs> yeah, it's well, hard. This is, a, yeah, yeah. It has been That's the... one of the greatest albums ever made, you know? Oh, man, what an album. Ben Folds, man. So cool. Yep. That's possibly the best answer to this question because I think it'd be hard to answer without making anyone feel left out, I guess, ish. What do you mean? What, like real yeah, people? Just... You just say you want Reese Witherspoon there or something. Like, it's something that's ridiculous that you'll never get. That's what you yeah, say. Well, the people yeah. we've got, I'm happy with. So. Oh, okay. yeah, no, no. Yeah, this isn't, yeah. Cause we, Losers. Because um, we, we, <laughs> we, everybody that's invited is, is, is kind of handpicked that me and Matt want there. Everybody that's kind of uh, is coming along. And there's lots of artists Thanks that a lot. want there that haven't been able to make it. Hey, <laughs> well, that was um, going to be my answer. Was the person yeah. I want there is me? So yeah, well, I was leading up to that. <laughs> we, you you, you were sort of invited. 
<laughs> yeah, the, the, what I was just... gonna say is the person that I would most want there is Flory. So oh, there, you go. there we go. That's so nice. No, I don't care. I don't want a dick there. I want Shatner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would take Shatner over me as well. No, twice a year might be too much. I think that might be too yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, get sick of each other. So. When it's it's bigger, a, a bigger when it's a bigger convention, sure. Um, talk amongst yourselves. Okay. What are you up to now? La 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 <laughs> la. You la, 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 la. I'm aping about. I'm doing apes. Apes mm. strong together. I wish I could do anything. It's what do you call it? Half term. I call it school Half holidays. Term. Yeah. School holidays as well. We have summer holidays, which is six weeks, big one, and then each term you have a half term where it's a couple of weeks. Easter, two weeks, yeah. Easter holiday, which we run at the moment, is two weeks instead of one week. Okay. Right. This is another open house related question, which is, I guess, relevant to two of us here, and also tickets will be on sale now. Man, I'm so, so hungry. It's quarter to one. <laughs> Tickets will be on sale now. Um, how did Vice Press go from creating posters to incredible community events? Oh, I don't know. I can't believe it's happened. Honestly, <laughs> it, yeah. well, it was. It's interesting from the outside watching it because I remember you guys having what was originally dubbed 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 open house, and I was like, why have they had all these people to what's essentially a closet in a business park? We, we didn't and then, think... but there was heaps of people there and it well, was we like people were having a great time on, yeah. and then mm. it just carries on doesn't it so why did we decide to do open house the first time james do you remember um get rid of posters <laughs> make them no, come we to us <laughs> we were like i think we were was... excited about having an office weren't we yeah we kind of moved into that big office space and we could and we just thought oh wouldn't it be nice to just kind of do something outside of the conventions for a day or whatever. Like yeah. I think Mondo had done like the flat file sales and I think the Darus had done stuff where they kind of invited people over to their office and I well, it wasn't long after we'd been over to Amblinesque and we kind of thought, oh, it'd be nice to do something yeah. for folks that support us over here. So it was it and we've we've kind like of a, always... a hundred like a hundred people showed up, didn't they? So then we were yeah, like, oh shit, we need to. It was wild. Yeah. Then, a pand- yeah. then a pandemic happened, which yeah not paid to any more plans. My brain fell out. The pandemic happened, and then we were like, "What else can we do?" It is you've had, it's in the thing. It's a community thing. We um we just want to do something. You know, you've got things like Thor Bubble, and then over in the states, you've got Flat Stock and. Mondo Con and all things like that. It's just nice to be able to do something where like minded people can get yeah. together, have a chat. We've become really friendly with a lot of the artists that we work with. We've become friendly with a lot of the collectors. So it's just a gathering of mates, really. And we'll, however big we That's get. That's a better way to put it because I'm not really a fan of community. I think that can quickly yeah. turn into something the cliquish and weird. And it's more just like. I, a thing for people that like that sort of stuff. Yeah, I think, and I've yeah. said this about like um, the the one of the big reasons that I continue to spend exorbitant amounts of money to get over for Thought Bubble is that I think in this day and age it is more important than ever to do real things and see real mm. people because we can get very down in the dumps and negative about things that happen online and because it's a, it's a fucking nightmare, especially if you have to exist on Twitter and Instagram, like which we do with yeah. the jobs that we're doing. So I think it's good to get out there, see the faces, say, have, and I know this sounds a bit weird, but like have people come up to you and say a nice thing to you in your face. Mm. And, you know, we, we appreciate all the support online from the people that are nice, but mm. unfortunately with the way the internet works, you don't always see that stuff as much as you see the horrible shit. So just to see that the world exists, that people like similar things that you do and to just, you know, have a little, a oh, nice little group hug for a minute is beneficial, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Softy. Um, now let's get back to swear yeah. about stuff. Yeah. So Carly, this one's um, from Carly AF, Carly Draws, mm-hmm. who we've also spoken favorably already of. Today's You've been episode. on this show back in the day. 
she has. She's uh, very much like her artwork. I think she's great. Yeah, she's fun. She's done some cool Star Trek stuff, which should see the light of day soon. Um, And it's a Star Trek theme. And now, I don't know the answer to this because I don't really know Star Trek well enough. So you're going to have to answer for me. So what's which classic Star Trek character would you all be? Oh, this is dangerous. <laughs> right. So I would like I would like to be Captain Kirk. I, I okay. love him, and I've always sort of idolised your bones, though. Kirk. No, yeah. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> if, if it's classic, does TNG does TNG count? Yeah, yeah TNG yeah, counts. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So Worf. Because mm. he's just a, just a grumpy sod. That's true. I'm, I'd, I'd say Worf is, is who I'm most like. Oh, okay. And if we needed a man to stand up the back and shoot the guns, you would definitely put your hand up for that as well, I think. And I'd get yeah. ignored all the time as well when I have make suggestions. I feel you like I ignored. feel and, like I'm And like, oh. you, you, you running Worf off... Worf is of... always saying, shoot them, and then they go, no, and then it turns out he was right. Like every he's, and he, single he's constantly time. running off on his own to listen to his version of angry thrash metal, which is just to play with his stick in the hollow deck. Yeah, right? exactly. So, I uh, love Wolf. Uh, Wolf is great. Yeah. All right. I'm into that. Oh, Jesus. Let's do James because that's If you say funny. Wesley, I'm going to kick off. <laughs> Wesley. <laughs> hey, we- you know no, what? He's you're, not a ca- that, you're not Wesley. You're not Wesley, yeah. but he was a good... I am a big fan of Wesley Crusher. Not because he's not a fucking wiener, because we know he is, but because he added to the family on the ship. Like that's he did. his it whole was point. Cute. And his last episode, like you're softening the blow of Wesley. No, his no, last I'd two episodes George, were great. Maybe Jordy. He's a bit of a goody two shoes. Uh, no, I was thinking Jordy. I don't know. Maybe not. Though. You just want to wear the cool glasses. The thing with Jordy is he's always unlucky in love, and that's not you. So. No. Yeah, I, I think you're you're data esque because you've always you, like yeah, I've yeah, seen yeah. you. I've seen you. It's like you shut down all human components <laughs> and just go into like right. I'm researching new microphones or whatever, and it's like he's just gone. He's in there. <laughs> I think we could say Jean Luc Picard, you know, because you're quite like serious. <sighs> you know, okay. gets things done. Yeah, you get things done. Quite serious. Right, I'll take it. Move on. Yeah, I think that's the closest one for me. But but he's John Luke when he had the hairpiece on in that one episode where he was young, right? So he <laughs> yeah. still has yeah. the hair. <laughs> Good, let's get a haircut that. tomorrow. Thick, thick out of air. Um, I, I'm not. I can't nominate my own character. I think I'm just a peanut that only exists in this time, aren't I? Who are you like? Don't you don't you say I'm that guy that and um what's the guy that's constantly having pratfalls and um <laughs> what's his name? Uh ends up plugged into the machine and going super brain on oh, TNG. Yeah. Well that's who we what's all really name? are. Barkley. Yeah. Or Broccoli Barkley, as they yeah. nickname him. Yeah, uh, in reality, like we'd like to be Shannon, we'd like to be Wolf, we'd like to be Captain God. In reality, we're all Barkley. <laughs> <laughs> The biggest loser Awkward in Awkward in Starfleet. social situations. Late all the time. Doesn't really like talking to people or contributing, and yet it's always foisted upon him. And he always just ends up in such ridiculous situations. Turns into a spider, or you oh, know, yeah. what else happens to him? There's that one where he thinks he's got, like, transporter psychosis. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Because there's like something in the transporter beam, and he's just like, I'm going crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. Yeah. He is great. Yeah, we're all here. Right. <laughs> is that it for questions? Well, I now I want to know who I am in a Star Trek, but I don't think I'm anybody. This, is, this sucks. This stinks. Mm. Okay, I can think of someone for yeah, you. Don't you, worry. you know. I'm going to be some guy. I'm not going to be a Ferengi or something, am I? No, you're not a Ferengi. Hmm. This is a real. I, don't, I, don't I, don't I need to do an online is. quiz. Is there an online quiz? Who are you in TNG? <laughs> I'll go through and do the fourteen questions or whatever. Which TNG character? And I mean, Riker, I... but I mean nobody's oh, as cool as Riker. Nobody so it's not is. Possible. I'm pretty close though. Here mm. we go. Brainfall. Start quiz. All right, you guys keep going. You're in yeah. ten forward, and Guinan wants to know what you'd like to drink. You'll have wine. Champagne, moonshine, a chocolate martini, or a Hawaiian sunset. 
Jesus. You must have like a grape juice on you. Isn't that what Worf gets? And then he says, I'm going to have a Hawaiian drinker. sunset. I don't even know what that is. Uh, Next. I'd pay to use that. It's a tequila thing. It's like a, it's yeah, like a yeah, yeah. tequila uh, sunrise. Okay, 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 okay. Who are you? I'm not going to read every question, but I'm going to do it anyway. Right. Yeah. While he's doing that, what, um, what, what news have we got this week, Matt? What do you mean? Um, what, uh, open house. Tickets on sale. First tickets line up sale. to nine. Announced. Yeah. Under 12s go free. We're working on doing five by five freebies like we did last time for everybody. Yep. Uh, new venue, awesome venue. Working on a couple of food venues, vendors. Mark and me is going to be there from Mark from Mark and me podcast. Uh, we've got a film screen and a Robocop with potentially a free poster. Uh, this with celluloid screens, partnership with those guys. Have I forgotten anything? Can we talk about the the thing that's releasing on Thursday, or we're not allowed, or will this be will this be live on that day? Um, yeah, because I've just left a long enough gap in case I need to cut it out. I can cut it out. So the Vault Steelbooks are coming out. They are. So it's what when we've are they already coming done out? Steel Steelbook this, this week. week. Oh wow. Okay. Well, next week, but this okay. week soon. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, they're being, hold on. Mm, yeah, they go on sale on the 15th, so it should be today. If this, this should go up on the 15th, mm. so they should be available to buy today. So it's seven of the original eight film vaults. Um, the uh, 1970, 1917 isn't getting a steel book. Um, not our decision. Don't at us. It's just licensing stuff as always, you know, yeah. there's always like readings. Um, like with the other film vaults, we are going to be um, doing a, fingers crossed, doing a special version. So we should know by the time this goes up, hopefully today, sh there should be a version going up, or at least this week, that is the steel book with a poster. So like yeah. we did with the original edition, uh, with the original well, it's... vault ones. The difference is these are going to be edition size, so it's going to be a steel book plus an editions size A2. poster. So it's A2, yep. Um, and if anyone goes, wow, that's hard to frame, well, in the UK it's not, it's easy, yeah. you get it from anywhere. We're in the UK, so you know yeah. what? Mm. And if you're outside of the UK, just buy one of our frames. We I do frames. <laughs> um, I've got a few shipping bits and bobs just to figure out with them. Um, they don't ship until end of June, July. They can go in wraparounds, can't they? Because there's yeah, balls. they can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so, uh, who who, who are, are you? I'm Geordie. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are a half blind, so you know. Yeah, yeah and always in trouble with the ladies. Oh, uh, you have to Geordie's send pretty it. cool. The Geordie rolls good when he goes under the door. I, like that, that. I could, do, I could do that. You know, a slow, mm -hmm. very slow roll. <laughs> So right. you're wrong. Geordie LaForge. And he's got that meme. He's got that meme, hasn't he? He yeah, does Geordie's have the most style. Meme. Most iconic look, which is exactly like me. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Classy. Right, that's it. All right then. <laughs> I'm glad that was did it was everyone oh, else. Who won, who won the questions? Yeah, we should oh, probably say that. More questions. So, who won the questions? No, I'm saying for next time. Oh, more questions. More questions. Yes. You have um, the most chance of getting read if you comment on the thingy. Please click like if oh, you've watched. Oh, hold on. Oh, we haven't oh. read the question that was on YouTube. Jesus oh, Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that was loud. We're oh. telling people to comment <laughs> on the YouTube. We should probably read the questions on the YouTube. It better be a good one. Can everyone hear um, me crunching this ice, by the way, on every yeah, episode? Yeah, I can hear you, but it might it might cut out on the... Cool, I should probably stop okay. doing this, I, li I, I do like this question. So this is from Dan Dan Lyles. So Dan's, um, Dan pops up every every now and again, he supports us. So, um, oh, a cheeky little plug for something he's done here. So, I, I like it, though. I'm going to roll with it. So, Dan's got a book called Underexposed, apparently. Now... That is, it features posters of films that were never made. So, um, you know, guess films that were announced and, and that never right, ended right, right. day. So what films that fell into production hell 
would you like to to make or see a poster for? Mm. So he wants free mm, ideas no. for volume two then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Wow. Um, oh, gee. I'm all for it. I'm not. Well, I don't. I don't well, know. World Cup returns because they were going to do that and then they didn't. So yeah. There you go. Yeah. Um, and that's the thing too with the back to the legacy sequel thing. I feel like all those ones we would have said have now they're back on, like the Beetlejuice Beetlejuice situation and the, yeah. Robocop's I mean, not back on though, is it? That was was it Darren know. Aronofsky or someone crazy was going to be making it? Oh uh, yeah, that rings a bell. It was Ghostbusters Go to Hell. That Ooh, was that one? The Alien oh. movie that the um, District Nine guy was going to do. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that looked interesting, didn't it? Yeah, With Michael yeah. Bean. Yes, that was yeah. A, yeah, that's a very good one. You know what I yes. would like to see a poster for, for his book or whatever. The um. Before the rise of Skywalker was the rise of Skywalker, and we were like, Ugh, "Don't oh. let that, don't let that guy make the movie." But then we probably should have just let that guy make the movie. The one that so, was mental, yeah. Colin well, Trevorrow was Star Wars, yeah. But it made like reading about what it was and looking at the concept art was like it followed on from the Last Jedi more so than what they ended up making. So I'd like to see at least see some yeah. more Star Wars of. Things. I like yeah. the Rise of Skywalker though because I like uh, when all that lightning comes out of Palpatine and just des- destroys a million spaceships mm. or something. Or is oh, he bringing yeah. them to life? I can't remember. Anyway, I Both. remember going. This is <laughs> this is mental. <laughs> this is crazy. I'm here for it. And there was a slug. There was a big slug alien wandering around, wasn't there? Yeah, for no reason. Yeah. I it. So you, you remember so... how the galaxy wouldn't come, but then Lando flew away for half the movie, and then they did come because Lando went and. Made everyone fly into the the with the Mary. It was pretty cool. The spaceships yeah. came out of the ground. Yeah, like magic. Were they just cool. there already onto the ground? And he was like, "Yeah, this is gonna be a great fully, surprise." <laughs> fully, fully stocked with people that were manning them and 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 flying them. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And each everyone one's did. got a Death Star on it. Yeah, they definitely thought that all through, didn't they? Yeah. Pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah. I actually, to be up, to be honest, I I enjoyed it on that level, that Flash Gordon ridiculous level, like as a self-contained. Film. I don't. And it looked good, you know. It looked really good. I don't disagree, but also it should not have been the third film in that trilogy. No, but like Palpatine on a great big gimbal thing with his Is fingers all the and shit's stuff cool? hanging off. I was like, that's cool shit. Yeah. All the shit's like, cool. It's just when you. It's when you start to think about the practicalities. It's when you it. watch it in line with all the other ones. You go, it, it doesn't seem to really marry no. up. It's like a weird own um, movie thing. Mm. What were we talking so, about before we just start talking? Legacy about film, film. Ho- le- legacy films that never got made that we'd like to see a poster for. So we've got RoboCop Returns. Well, just films that never got go made. Ghostbusters Go to Hell. Ghostbusters Go to Hell. Yeah, we've got. Um... Is that what they were going to call it? Yeah, something like that. I think that was one of the work. the alien film that we don't know the subtitle for, and there was Star Wars: Jewel of the Fates. I think it was going to be called. Yeah, was it something like that? Um, yeah, they're all up there. Um, Star Trek, <laughs> the original version of Star Trek Four would have been interesting. I'd have I'd have gone for that. Tell me about oh, it. Oh, the Ed, um... Eddie Murphy was going to be in it. What? Yep. Oh, really? What else? Tell yeah. me more about it. It was the same basic storyline. Yeah. Except Eddie Murphy was the human that they talked to back in time. So it wasn't that, that hmm. Gillian lady, it was Eddie Murphy, funny man. What's what's the actual Star Trek for about? The whales, it's when they go to say the oh, whales. Oh yeah, right, right, right. right. Oh. <laughs> so okay. you know. I can I don't know why I think he that's was gonna five. do it and then it, and then he didn't. He did um Beverly Hills Cop instead. Which you know Fair correct. move, yeah. Good, Good move. choice. Yeah. I think it was Beverly, or was that Ghostbusters, where he was going to be Ghostbusters and he did Beverly Hills Cop instead of Ghostbusters? Know. I'm and sure both, maybe. that might be in a bit later. So if you want a feature, just like Dan, get commenting on YouTube. Like, subscribe, If you want us to half, half answer your question I tell you and what, forget what we're talking about. Let's go back to Star Trek. All of these in hell Star Trek movies since the last um yeah movie. the pike and they um... were gonna do they were gonna do chris hemsworth weren't they they announced yeah. him and then he was like you've not asked me and i've not signed a contract and no i mean 
So he said, give me a hundred million dollars. Basically, yeah. And they were like, nah. Mm. Well, that they should have awesome. done. Like, they should Kirk have done and it. his dad, Kirk and his dad, Chris Hemsworth was the biggest movie star on the planet at the time because it was dr- literally right after Ragnarok. Yeah. They should have done it. They really should. And instead, he did Men in Black Because imagine those two Chris's. To Chris Fest. Just mm. sparring it would have been amazing because, you know, he meets his own dad that he never knew and then he turns out maybe he doesn't really like his dad. 100%. And then they have to get along and it, 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 it writes itself. Yeah, it would have been quite cool. A Men in Black film with Will Smith in it to answer a question earlier. What do you mean? I don't... In three of them, what are you talking about? Legacy it, sequels. You want a legacy sequel? Like films. Old man Will Smith when right. he comes back. Oh, uh, okay. Who's was the who's was the best question then? What was the best question? I'll tell you who. who I can yeah, remember that last one. So it's you're going to have to give us a quick recap of questions that you read. Go for it. So we had Dan's legacy sequels that never got made. Make a poster for sequels slash thing. We had Adam Shepard with what album cover do you wish you designed or could redesigned? We had Todd Day Rov with legacy sequels being the big thing. Which franchise would you make a sequel to? Choose a director with two leads. Um. We had Oliver Rankin with what unconventional sources outside of film inspire poster designs. We had Carly with what classic Star Trek character would you be? Uh, we had... You didn't, you didn't read that. Uh, what? What classic... Oh, yes, you did. Sorry. Yeah, Star did. Trek. We did it all. research in it. <laughs> <laughs> You're Jordy. <laughs> Luke and then Luke James considering Toxic Avenger got a recent reboot movie. Which seemingly forgotten property do you think deserves a new release? Oh man, I can't remember I any vote, of these. I vote, and I'll give the reason for it. I vote the music-based album cover question because that was a, that was a good I one, don't yeah. think we've ever talked about music on this show, and I think it gave good chat. It gave, I agree. provided good chat. Yeah, there you that's go, the winner-winner winner chicken dinner uh, for me well, as well. Well, Todd, sorry, um, you were leading all the way up, and then Adam um, Adam Shepard just pipped you to the what post. Did Todd so ask? Todd asked about legacy sequels being a big thing. Which mm. franchise would you make? Because you said that was the best question about ten At minutes the time, ago. It was. It was. Then, was that after we did the music one? It was. <laughs> <laughs> but but I can Maybe. convince anyone of anything if I if I if I need, if I have a few seconds. So I've done it. Yeah, I like I like Adams. I'm happy to go with the music one as done. well. So Adam, shoot us a message, a DM, an email, and we'll um we'll send you four. Oh, copies so they have of, to watch um, the show to actually get their prize. They do. It's yeah, very we're not clever, not James. Online. Very yeah, clever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Why would send we do us, that? Yeah. So we send us a message and we'll send you four copies of Escape from New York by Flory. Who doesn't need those? You know? Nah, we'll, no, I we'll, sure we'll don't. Pick some, we'll pick some gems. <laughs> All right. Oh, I'm the, I, forgot I, was, I forgot I'm the host. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. This has been a schmozzle, this one. So, you know, mate, if you feel like coming back after all this crap that we've just spoken for the last hour, then do so next week. We don't know what we're doing. Um, but we might again. I think every time at the end, we're going to say we're going to watch Thunderdome for next week, okay? Just like we did we'll last Thunder episode. Dome for next week. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That'll do us. We're off. Bye. I'm the only one waving. <laughs>